people and that we, we had no doubt that the Bush administration and the, the real president, Dick Cheney at that time, would extrapolate that into that momentum into a full-blown invasion of Iraq. We had no problem opposing that. Our members have always supported, uh, you know, an opposition to the war. And then from the moment both of those wars started, the need to get the heck out. And, uh, and redirect these resources, settle both of those conflicts peacefully, and then redirect those resources here. So, of course, when Rosa DeLauro uh, came out initially and, and uh, opposed the use of force resolution, the uh, blank check that was given to the Bush-Cheney administration by uh, too many Democrats, uh, we cheered that, and we cheered her uh, support for the pullout when she was here uh, just the other day at our opening session of our convention. Now, there's going to be an anti-war demonstration in Boston, uh, I believe it's October 17th. Is the union involved with that? We will be to some extent. Uh, we don't have a large membership around Boston, but uh, we primarily participate in the anti-war movements uh, via a vehicle called U.S. Labor Against the War, which is kind of our home base in the anti-war movement. It's a coalition of unions, national district bodies and locals and just regular rank and file who are opposed to both of these wars, primarily the Iraq war. But anyway, through U.S. law, we will participate. And we've had upwards, going back now into the seven or eight years that this, uh, these two conflicts have been underway, we've had upwards of uh, as many as a handful, or as few as a handful, as many as several hundred UE members that have been able to come out for one demonstration or another. And we just figure it's, a, it's an obligation really on our part to give some actual life to our resolutions against the war that we have to periodically go out and do what we have to do to scandalize the administrations that continue these wars. Speaking of resolutions, you've pretty much finished that at the convention. Where Was there one or two that uh, you want to really get out to the public? Well, I would think that uh, coming out of our convention here, which this one happened to be in New Haven, I would say that we were probably uh, most uh, inclined to be deep into the discussion, obviously, of the health care question. We reaffirmed our support for single payer and its congressional expression, H.R. 676, the John Conyers bill, the Medicare for All bill. Great discussion about that because, as we presumed, the members, the locals, our unions, our employers are absolutely on the attack in every way not only with gigantic year after year premium increases, but every conceivable kind of aggravation and humiliation with the, the administration of these insurances. It's a strike issue for us in the public or in the private sector. It's a it's a deal breaker in the public sector negotiations everywhere. So anyway, we had a fruitful and kind of freshening up discussion on health care. And I would say, in my opinion, at least second to that probably was the discussion of the consequences of the economic crisis and the uh, banking crisis, the financial crisis, the corporate crime wave. Uh, and its impact on our members. Uh, and this is, the, I think in the several days that we've been here, the persistent theme that ran through our members is, is that they want, they want action on the corporate crime wave. We have thousands, potentially tens of thousands of cr corporate criminals, white collar criminals, embezzlers, fraudsters, con men, every imaginable kind of corporate crime, book cookers, uh, union busters, uh, a wave of historic proportions, and there's been virtually no response to it. Bernie Madoff is in jail. Uh, the former owner of the Republic Windows shop in Chicago is now finally, for the moment, in jail. But is, there's a response that has been too timid, uh, too little, too late, but there's still time. And, and on a number of occasions, the room erupted into applause and affirmation that we expect, we in fact demand that the Obama administration get going, however it needs to, to clear the decks of this corporate crime. Not to go to Wall Street and have lunch with them, even if he tongue lashes them. We want handcuffs. We want some of these people put into jail because the statute of limitations now begins to expire the behaviors are drifting back to the old. It's only been a year since the most acute part of this crisis. It looks like memories are short. We're not going to extricate ourselves from this if we don't right this ship. We have a, a systemic crisis here that needs to be addressed, and the corporate crime wave has to be addressed with it. Final question. If people want to get in touch with their union to learn more about it, what would be the best way? Best vehicle is probably how most folks find us today, which is through our national website, which is heavily trafficked. We're happy. We're proud of it. It'll include uh, very detailed summaries of what went on at our convention, so if folks want to see that too, it's the three W's, www.ueunion.org, ueunion.org. Or if you Google up or uh, search up rank and file union, you'll get UE, and it will come up. And we encourage folks to come visit it. We're a lively union. We've always got something to say. You'll always see what the members think on our website. Welcome it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having me.
Boston, Saturday, October 17th, Copley Square, 1 p.m., protest the wars, end the siege of Gaza, no support for the Israeli occupation, no war with Iran. Be there. We're dedicating the song and the video to the memory of Abir Aramin, the daughter of my friend Bassam Aramin. She was walking home from school when she was shot and killed by Israeli border police. She was 10 years old. She was just as precious to her dad and to her family as my daughter Emily is to me and my wife. This is also dedicated to the 437 children of Gaza who were murdered by Israel in the recent attack. They were all precious. <laughs>